Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Interactive Biology TV, where we're making biology fun. My name is Leslie Samuel, and in this episode, episode 56, I'm going to continue talking about regulating peripheral resistance. This is part two, and I think this is going to be the final part about this. So let's get directly into the content for today. So in the last episode, we emphasized, we re-emphasized the fact that mean arterial pressure is equal to cardiac output times peripheral resistance. And we've spoken about the fact that we are modifying peripheral resistance. We're looking at the different ways in which peripheral resistance is influenced. And in last episode, you can go back to episode 55, we spoke about vasoconstriction. And we said that that is going to cause an increase in peripheral resistance. And we spoke about vasodilation which is going to cause a decrease in peripheral resistance. Now, we're going to talk about two other ways in which we can influence peripheral resistance. The first way that we're going to talk about today is called blood viscosity. Um, and by viscosity, what I mean is basically the thickness of the blood. Now this is very logical. For example, a few weeks ago I was in Colombia and I remember we went to a restaurant and we I ordered a mango milkshake and the milkshake was a very 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 thick and I was sucking on a straw trying to get it up and it was really hard to get that mango, I mean, it was a very good tasting mango milkshake, but it was hard to get it in my mouth because of how thick it was. Now, this is the same thing. The thicker the blood is, the more resistance we're going to have to blood flow. So if we increase blood viscosity, we are going to increase peripheral resistance significantly. And by the viscosity, specifically, I am talking about the ratio of, that should be an O, the ratio of RBCs, okay, so red blood cells, to the blood plasma. And by plasma, we're basically talking about the fluid. So if we have more red blood cells, or if we increase the ratio of red blood cells to plasma, we are increasing the thickness of the blood. So the overall message is, and let me just divide this in two, if we increase blood viscosity, that of course is going to result in an increase of peripheral resistance. On the other hand, if we, let's use a different color, decrease blood viscosity, that is going to cause a decrease in peripheral resistance. And what's an example of a way we can increase blood viscosity? Well, for example, if we are dehydrated, what that's going to do is it's going to reduce the amount of fluid in the blood, so the plasma is going to be less, and that's going to cause an increased ratio of red blood cells to the plasma. So we're going to have an increase in blood viscosity and that is going to cause an increase in peripheral resistance. What can cause a decrease in blood viscosity? Um, for example, loss of blood volume due to um, anemia. Or if there's a hemorrhage, that's another example. Forgive my R's. My students always make fun of me for my R's. But um, if there's anemia or a hemorrhage, that's going to cause a decrease in blood viscosity, causing a decrease in peripheral resistance. So the first way we're looking at today is by influencing blood viscosity. The second way is by looking at the total blood vessel length.
And the message here is the longer the blood vessels, the higher the peripheral resistance. So if you increase the blood vessel length, you're going to naturally increase peripheral resistance. And that should also make sense. If something is much longer, if you have a tube that's very long, it's going to be much harder to get the blood through. Uh, if my straw for my mango shake was extremely long, let's say that straw was two feet long, that would take a lot of work for me to get that great tasting mango shake into my mouth because it's longer increase in peripheral resistance. Now, how would this translate to a human being? Well, I'll give you a very common example in America and other places also. Um, if someone is overweight, what that's going to do is that's going to naturally increase blood vessel length. I'm going to give you some numbers right now that are very disturbing or can be very disturbing depending on how you look at it. If you gain 2. Point, uh, let's get that point there so you can see it. If you gain 2.2 pounds of weight of additional fat, that is going to add approximately <laughs> And this is very scary. Uh, 400 miles of blood vessels. That's one kilogram of fat and approximately 650 kilometers of blood vessels. So you can see by gaining weight, you're gaining more blood vessels. That's basically increasing the blood vessel length and that is going to increase peripheral resistance. And we know what increasing peripheral resistance will do to mean arterial pressure and to blood pressure because MAP, we keep coming back to this, is equal to CO times P. Are more fat, longer blood vessels, increased peripheral resistance, and that is going to cause an increase in mean arterial pressure. So I guess the take-home message for today is watch your weight. That's pretty much it for this episode. As usual, I want to invite you to check out the website at interactive-biology.com for more biology videos and other resources. You can join the community over there, ask your questions in the forums, and just take part in everything that we have going on. That's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.